speaker is uh, Rachel Lamy from Crossref, and Rachel is going to be say, uh, talking about what are all these dots and what can linking them tell me. So I'll hand over to Rachel. Cool. Okay. Um, am I? Can you hear me? Okay. Right. I'm going to be. I'm going to be quick and hopefully loud. That's that's what I'm aiming for this afternoon. So I'm going to take you for a bit of a whoosh round one of the a new service that Crossref is um, is building, and I also tell you a little bit about Crossref itself. So we're a not-for-profit membership organisation. Um, lots of publishers use our um, the metadata that we provide to build tools and services, and they also use it to register. They also use Crossref to register the content that they publish so that people know that it, it, it exists and they can find it online. So let's start with some questions. It's late on a Friday afternoon. Um, okay, so what's this? Not that. Um, <laughs> so, okay, let's say these are an article. We've got some blog posts as well. So we talked about different forms of, um, of communicating science. Um, we talked about data sets and publishing data. Um, tweets, obviously lots from today. And then things like Wikipedia, so all stuff that's come up over the course of today. And those are all linked together. Again, as we discussed, there are lots of ways to communicate, um, communicate science. And we're really interested in looking at those links um, and how, how everything sort of fits together and works off each other. And we're doing that via a service called um, Crossref Event Data. So that is tracking the discussion of scholarly articles on the web. Um, who's, who's talking about what? This is mostly things that have DOIs. Um, so landing pages as well. But things that have DOIs can be tracked in Twitter, blog posts, all of those different sources um, that, we're, that we're working on and trying to look at more and more as time goes on. But as you know, in the past, and actually still nowadays, the main way that research kind of gets, uh, the, the traditional way of talking about and using and referencing research is in the reference lists at the end of articles. And I just talked about DOIs. Um, for anyone not familiar, you can see the DOI string at the bottom, of, um, at the bottom that relates to this article. And I'll talk about those more in, in a moment. But that's sort of the traditional way to discuss research and look at how it's being used within the community. As I said, now that's kind of... Um, research is being talked about in lots of different ways. Um, the new Real Peer Review Twitter account points to a fairly, a fairly exciting... Um, oh, yeah, um, I, it's sort of a catch-all, isn't it? Um, and then actually talking earlier about um, you know people using things like Reddit to discuss and disseminate science. So yeah, there you go. You can see that um, a study is being discussed and commented on um, on Reddit as well. But where do where does Crossref fit into this whole discussion? I just talked about DOIs or digital object identifiers, and publishers come to us to register metadata, so information on the papers, books, journals, preprints that they publish, and they also assign DOIs um, to those pieces of content. And they do that because, I look, we just looked at reference lists, it's great to link things together via URLs, absolutely, <coughs> but actually they do change and they do break, even with the most dedicated of webmasters and system admins. Countries change names, government departments change names. Um, so you need a persistent way so that if the content moves, anyone else who has been linking to that article can still find it and use it in their research. Um, at Recon last year on the Hack Day, Ron and I were looking up to try to find DOIs for things that didn't have them in reference lists. That's really difficult to be sure that the piece of work that you're looking at is the piece of work that you mean to be talking about. So again, to show them in their, um, in their sort of native space, being cited in this eLife article, so you can use the DOI to cite, um, to cite that article in a persistent way. And I think even, um, even within the journal space, um, 
publications move around. So this publication used to be published by Coaction. It moved to Taylor and Francis. It's now moving somewhere else. The DOI will tie the link to that paper within reference lists so that you'll always come back to that article on the publisher site whenever you need to find it. So we're kind of sort of a switchboard or a linking hub for that information. So if you haven't heard about Crossref, it's because we're sort of working behind the scenes to join all that stuff up and make sure that the links between research are persistent in collaboration with our member publishers. So I talked about, um, I talked about using um, citations and references. So we're looking beyond that now to, to try to capture sort of non-traditional um, links to research. And this isn't, this isn't metrics, it isn't, um, it isn't anything like that. It's really just capturing that data and making it available for the community to use. So we're exposing those kind of relationships so that, um, so that people can play around with them and um, potentially build <coughs> tools and services on top of them. That's, that's not our role in this thing. We're the, we're the sort of people behind the scenes. As such, it's an application programming interface. So it's a way to... Um, it's a way to make data available in a way so that it can be integrated into other systems and so that it kind of updates and lets those systems use it in real time. So if someone else um, tweets about an article, then we can add that into that, that pot of information and someone using it is able to get that updated information as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, it's, it's capturing that kind of information and trying to link it to the, to the article, book, conference proceeding across lots of different subject areas. So as such, it looks something like this. Um, so you can see that there's, there's a level of interpretation and work involved to do that. But I think an important thing is that we're, we're, we're collating this information so that people can use it. We're not sort of putting an algorithm or things like that on top of it. It's important if you, want to, if you want to use it to evaluate research, that you're able to see the, the cleanest set of data possible so that you can, you can put your own interpretation on top of it. I'll talk about that more in a second. But as of yesterday morning, we've, um, we've seen over 14 million events that are related to, um, to about the Think about the, the six million DOIs that we have in the service at the moment. Um, we've got information on over, um, related to over 90, nearly 90 million DOIs. So you can see that this has space to grow but, um, over time. It's just the data, um, nothing more than that. And we've been doing work with um, the NISO Working Group for Altmetrics. And as I said, we're providing the evidence trail for every event so that you can go back and see where that information actually came from, where we gathered it from, so that you can sort of trust the source of, of information. I talked about interpretation. Um, with citations, there are ways that there are ways that they can be gamed, right? Um, you can see that within sort of journals merrily citing themselves and each other. Um, and also, as you know, things like um, um, Twitter, etc., can be gamed. If a, if a publisher tweets every time that they publish a certain article, that's not conversations happening around that article. That's, you know, that's, that's marketing, right? But um, I think it's, um, so you can look into more information. Um, you can look into more detail than that um, and sort of dive into to what might be important to you within your subject area or within, um, within the, the area that you work in. So with that in mind, can I do whatever with the service? Um, our developer's answer is probably yes. Um, you can put it to lots of types of uses. So if you're interested in working with, um, with data, please come and speak to us. Um, we'd love you to, to see what sort of spin that you can put on it. Um, things like linked data, which we worked on a little bit last, here last year. Um, making visualizations, um, working on um, maybe bibliometrics, um, and it's a, again discoverability and um, what can you find out. Obviously, we've done bits and pieces ourselves, so we've got kind of a live stream of articles that are being edited in Wikipedia. 
So in Wikipedia, you get kind of edit wars. So people go in and add an article and say, this is citing it, and somebody comes along and says, no, it's not. Um, so you can see that um, we, sort of these sort of discussions going on in real time. And there's a live feed of that on the website, but I won't show that now because, A, it tends to be quite... Sometimes this stuff can be quite risque. Um, and also sometimes this is just sort of a, something we're playing about with, so chances are a live demo will not work. But it's interesting to see what's happening in real time. Instead, we've got lots of members in Korea, so we took it and we started to look at citations in Korean Wikipedia um, and, and what happened for that group. So again, you can chunk and use the information in lots of different ways. Um, it doesn't cost anything to use. Um, we're making it available for um, a CC0 license, which um, applies to, basically applies to, to data. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, please go ahead and make something cool, play about with the information, come and ask me questions. Um, so if you're in our website, you can just Google Crossref Event Data um, and take a look. We've opened it up for beta testing, so we've got a group of um, kind of keen people involved, um, but we're, we're, eager, we're eager to get more people um, to. So I'll not keep you any longer than that on a Friday afternoon and hand over. Thank you.